vibe going on here because you know this is like cosmos factory kind of you know you, the name cosmo i want to make it you know cool and vibey for us you know? i mean i can't outdo what you got behind your wall right there that's a lot going on well every single wall in here is completely covered really yeah it's very cool a little collection over the years a little collection do you ever, let me ask you something, a serious question. Do you ever pinch yourself and say, I'm Doug Cosmo Clifford. Like, look what I've done. Bam, you're an artist on the record. Your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist, Doug Cosmo Clifford of Credence Clearwater Revival. He has new music straight from Cosmo's vault, California Gold, featuring Bobby Whitlock of Derek and the Dominoes. Also, We'll be talking about traveling band, Credence Clearwater Revival at the Royal Albert Hall. It's on Netflix, now playing. But in the meantime, get your hands together and make sure you subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hit that bell to be notified so you don't miss any other episodes. It's all happening now. Don't touch that dial, kids. Bam. Oh, yeah. I, I do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just... I, I, you know, it's, you go back to when we had this dream when we were 13 and started a, an instrumental trio and, and it turned into all of this. And our, our dream was to have our records played in the radio and they've been doing it for 54 years. Oh, what a dream. Well, uh, nobody wants to go first. So, uh, guess what? It's me. The dream. You know, I just appreciate it, you know. Uh, and I do every day. I'm uh, very lucky. And uh, yeah, I've had two careers, really. Uh, the first with the chart maker, and then, then uh, revisited with Stu Cook. 25 years with that project. We were hoping to get three, maybe four years out of it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you original bass guitarist with Creedence Clearwater Revival, my pal Stu Cook! Go figure. You know, I, there, there's the, there's the, the old pinch. You deserve the pinch. You know what? You did very good, and you're a big, you're a big inspiration for a lot of people out there. California Gold. We'll talk about that, and also uh, Credence Clearwater Revival. You, you got uh, Netflix traveling bands out, which is a whole other side, which is so cool to see you guys. You feel that the group is going in the the direction that you wanted to go. Yes, but just not fast enough. Credence Clearwater Revival, poised to take on the mantle of the biggest band in the world. Traveling band, Credence Clearwater Revival. Tra tracking our history, and it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, the thing that I'm really pleased about it is they kept it all on the, on the up and positive side, and and most of it is uh, our our uh, set at Royal Albert Hall in London. That's the kind of the Beatles uh, place, and, and where the the big time Brit bands play. So we went over there with the idea of uh, competing for to be number one in the world. And when we left, we we were with a little help from Paul McCartney. A little, you, well, you also there's a little Beatle connection. There's a lot, you got a lot of little ties. It's like a little circle because you have George Martin's son. Is it Gil? Is you pronounce the name? Is it Gills or is it, how do you pronounce? Cause I, I'm from Brooklyn. I'll pronounce everything wrong. So correct me. Is it Gills? How do you pronounce his name? I I, I haven't met the man, so <laughs> <laughs> good. You know me either. So if you, Gil, if you're watching, tell us how do you pronounce your name? But but his son is actually hey, remastered and mixed it. Hey, you guys. <laughs> 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 But actually, I was watching it on Netflix, and it was pretty. It was really done well, and you're right. It didn't show like the dark side or any of the, the drama, but it shows a lot of the jamming going on. You guys live, you playing your drums, and it's funny. I'm watching it, and I'm noticing 
you, with, with John Fogarty, you're keeping your time, but you're you're noticing the lips. Your eyes are on his lips a lot of times too. He uh, uh, he did did that ever since we started as an instrumental trio, kind of his his, his security blanket because uh, he doesn't have you know dance moves or when he's not on the microphone he's not going to be out there boogieing because he can't and he's very uh, very shy that way was then in those days anyway so he'd always uh, oh, my my uh, drum set had to be right on the on the deck no no riser or anything right on the deck as close as i could be to his amp which is another story you know they're all their heads are all above the, the killing zone of the amps because they're standing i'm sitting and i'm in the death seat uh, 800 watts of lead guitar 800 watts of bass 400 watts of rhythm guitar and, and, uh, but i i made up for it in, in power in power and and uh, it's, it's a, actually it's a good thing they had all, all that amperage ar around me because I no holes barred when I played the, the, the drums, especially in those days. So the camco, they're like rare drums. That that oh, set, they're great drums. The great drums. You still have the original set that, that yeah, they played? Yeah, I do. I have a, a set and a half, actually. I, I had to cannibalize one to, to get a, a complete set. But uh, yeah, uh, they they were recommended when they were first, uh, first introduced. And a guy named Kenny Williams, uh, Drum World in San Francisco, uh, he was the owner. And uh, he said, hey, something's coming. Uh, your way and you're going to probably get rid of your Ludwig so uh, when I when I have a, have a set in I'll give, give you a call and he did and they were you know the, they were bought out by DW and uh, they still use the same lugs that the DW is, uh, are using today that's how good they built those drums wow because their, their hoops also were were th th thicker and uh, and, and more of an exact roundness, they, whatever their technique was, uh, they just outbuilt everything that, that was around. I don't know uh, if they cost a lot more than than the, the other co companies because it, it didn't matter to me what they cost. Yeah. Uh, give me three of them, you know, I, I, and that's what that's what I did the first. First three, uh, I think, in, in San Francisco. Uh, so uh, had one in my house, two at, at the factory, two two uh, that I would take on the road with me, and uh, yeah, they're they're terrific. So back then, when you first got introduced to these drums, when you got you know got to meet these drums, the Ludwig was like the big thing back then, you know, because everybody was using Ludwig. Yes. Did, did you think you're going to ditch the Ludwig, or are you like, oh, there's nothing's going to compare to Ludwig? Well, uh, the, the Ludwig was old, and uh, I had it before we had hits, so it, uh, you know, <laughs> the, I didn't spend a lot of money on repairs, uh, but I did put a fancy paint job on inside the bass drum, so I was cool. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Do you still have the original Ludwig? Did you ever hold on to them or? I, I don't, you know, you know, when, when you're doing what we, we did and, and uh, as busy as we were with the amount of uh, material we put out, which was uh, just a mountain load of, of work. Uh, you're not thinking about the yeah. a rock star in 20 years from now, these things, someone will really care about them. You don't think about that at all. I, there was a kid uh, who uh, I sold him to, uh, really sold him to his dad. Uh, if it would, it would have been for the kid, I would have given him to him, but the, the dad said, oh, I got to pay you for something for him. So I don't even remember what, what, it, what it was, but the kid was, was, it was his first drum set. And, you know, I think we may have had a, had a single or two out. And, uh, and uh, 
So it was it was a, a, a big deal. I had a, a, sling, a Slingerland set too uh, that was in a, a music store window in Oakland, California, and the and it was a Sparkle. Uh, it was a, Aqua, and but where where it was placed in the window, the sun hit it in certain spots as the sun moved through the sky, <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it, it was a multicolored set so i got a good deal on that one uh, you know they couldn't sell it uh because of, of the, the condition it was in but i said i don't care what it looks like <laughs> i just you know and slingerland is a, a a good company too or, or they were back then yeah kind of led the charge when when the rock and rollers came in especially with uh ringo i think ringo had, had a ludwig set that's right. Ringo had the Ludwig, but before that, he had that. Remember that he had a premiere kit. That, yeah, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> you know, cool kid. It was a really cool kid. What about while well, I have you here? And I know you've spoken about this before, but one thing you made very cool. And I have a friend of mine who who's he's uh very much into the drums, and he's like, "Wow, he did an eighteen inch to him." And uh, he was talking to him last night. It's the comedian Andrew Dice Clay, and he oh, was. Sure. I was really impressed about that. And the, the eighteen inch hi hats. Uh, yeah, the eighteen the eighteen inch hi hats. Correct. I play them. I still play them. And uh, what I did is uh, there's uh, it, it was Formula Six Hundred Two was the the Pi Steve Formula Six Hundred Two was the exact uh, n number and and information. I don't I don't think they. They make them anymore, but they make uh, actually a better 18-inch uh, uh, crash. And the, the the thinner symbol goes on top. The 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 heavier one goes on the bottom. And uh, let me tell you, the Green River uh, album on uh, are all 18-inch. I had some, and it made a huge difference. The 14 just got lost. It was like hitting a, 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 a sardine can with no fish in it. I mean, it was just, you know, I, and it, it, to me, it, it, I, I knew I could get a, have an overall better sound. And most of the stuff we did was on the, for my right hand anyway, it was on the, on the hi-hat. And you can open them up like maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, or you know, anything anything you want to, to get a desired sound uh, of course the more you pinch down the less uh of a, a, a reverb natural reverb you you, you get but uh, the trick was you know play, play it tight in the verse solo comes in and the chorus co comes up you bring open them up accordingly depending on the song and you get this, you know, you tell the tell the engineer, recording engineer, don't touch anything. I've got it, I've got it out here. He said, "What do you mean?" You know, I said, "Well, uh, you listen, listen to what I'm doing here. Just make sure you get that, and don't try to embellish it. Uh, and uh, unless you you check with me first. I'm surprised nobody else has done it. I have not seen one other person do it. I've, I've seen I've seen sixteens, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I, I have not seen eighteens. Uh, no, it's 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 a, it's a definitely a signature sound of of credence of of that. That's it's your sound, definitely. It was now. Did you when you did it? Did you get any grief from John or any of the other band guys? Hey, I don't want that. No, because uh, I was the only drummer and uh, surrounded by guitar players. They were immersed in the, what the guitars were doing. And uh, that gave me, a, you know, kept the pressure off of me. A couple of times, you know, uh, 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 John told me he didn't want me to play what I was playing. And uh, I would take a little uh, Sony um, mono uh, uh, cassette machine to to rehearsal every day and then uh, that was my note taker then I, I, if we were whatever we were working on that i needed to work on at home 
I would rec record a, a section of it, or if it might even be a whole song, I just let it roll, roll and then I, you know, turn it off so I didn't just waste tape. And, and uh, uh, then I'd go home and, and put it on that one, that mono track on a four track uh, uh, recorder. And then I would use those three tracks for different things on different songs. And some, sometimes they worked out, sometimes they didn't. Well, the song, uh, We'll Stop the Rain. The next time you have a chance to hear that song, it might be in the vegetable department of the grocery store. That's where I hear us on the radio all the time. And, but that's another story. <laughs> It's a great say. You know what? It's one of my favorite songs too. And I actually remember the movie Who'll Stop the Rain with Nick Notley and Tuesday yeah. Weld. Tuesday Weld, Michael Moriarty. Hello! Who'll Stop the Rain? They put his hand on the stove. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. But anyway, uh, the song was very boring and it needed something really, really different and really unique and not coming from a guitar because I'm not a guitar player and we had plenty of guitars going on. So there's uh, drum, uh, drum fills that are not quite a, a triplet, but uh, kind of hint around uh, based on a triplet. Uh, and then uh, throughout, uh, it's probably the most drum breaks I, I did on anything except for Grapevine. And uh, so next time you hear that song, listen to what the, what's, uh, I'm doing on the snare drum and uh, you'll see how different that song and imagine it without it. You could get a good nap in if <laughs> when when the band was writing and John was writing when you guys were writing would you jam a lot like have in your rehearsal and then go into the studio or was it a lot of it just ad libbing in the studio? Well, uh, there was no ad libbing in the studio when we went went into the studio. We knew the exact songs that were going to be in. There was no uh, 15 and then pick the, the best 10. We had the album in, in its entirety, note for note, song for song. So everything was real structured, you it guys. Totally, totally structured. And that's why, you know, John told me, don't do that. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it. And, uh, and I said, it, it, makes, it makes the song unique. It moves it. It needs it. And, and, and uh, you guys aren't coming up with anything. So um, I fought him all the way into the studio. And when we took took the song, the first first take, I was, uh, you know, I was I was in there, and, uh, and I made a difference. And that, of course, he never said that he liked it, and he and he wasn't big on giving anybody any compliments on on their playing. It was the other way around. Really, but that's just him, and you, know, you just you 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 know, you you know how to deal with it. You just on that one, I just forged ahead, and I said, "I'm going to save this song <laughs> or make it special anyway." I mean, you definitely made it special, and all a lot of your grooves. It's just. Man, I could just, all the hits and all these songs, what you guys did in this much time, it's incredible. Just to do one album for a normal man would get one good song, but all the sound and just what Credence did, it was just, it's definitely captured the moment of that era coming with the, the Vietnam War was going, you know, starting your music, you know, it's incredible what you captured the sound of that era. Well, you know, there, there was so much going on, uh, as you say, socially, historically, uh, civil rights, uh, on and on and on and on, and, you know, the Vietnam War and women's lib and uh, just all of these huge social changes happening at once. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, 
had short, concise, good beat songs as our, uh, instead of saying, fuck the pig and, you know, uh, and who you, who you, you're, you're preaching to the choir, you want to get to the masses and you, you, you do it by doing it on AM radio, you know, fortunate son, you know. The legendary Doug Cosmo Clifford of Credence Clearwater Revival. And you can find this episode unedited, uncut, in our all access VIP backstage pass in Patreon. It's only rock and roll, and we like it. And remember, who loves you, baby? We do. Until then, we'll see you all later. Now get out of here, you crazy kids.